Forbes India presents Top 30 Talent Leaders of 2023, powered by Indeed. Hi, I'm Sabina Lajak from Sipla. I'm currently heading the leadership hiring globally, the corporate HR and the employer branding. I'm very passionate about impacting people and adding value into their lives. And hence, this is my choice of profession. I have almost close to two decades of experience. So uh, there were three things that really pushed the button for HR. One was adding uh, meaning to people's lives. Um, secondly, you know, building connections because there's this uh, there's this beautiful energy when you know uh, exists when people feel heard, uh, when people feel valued, and when people feel seen. Right. So that is something that I think authentically I'm very drawn towards. And lastly, creating the right experiences for people because ultimately that's what people take ahead. And creating a legacy in this space is what truly inspired me to choose this profession. So I started my career with ICICI and Citibank and both these roles gave me the opportunity to deal with a lot of people because I was into sales and into service. And that's when I realized that, uh, you know, HR is my calling. Post that, I did my master's in human resources and I joined a search firm. And over there, I had some beautiful experiences which only uh, made me realize and feel that, you know, there is no right experience or wrong experience. It's all learning experiences. And um, it's end of the day, it's the people who matter because they overtake the strategy, right? You can take a bet on people, but you really can't take a bet on strategy as to how successful or not successful it will be unless you take the right people to make it successful. So that's something when, you know, uh, was my first experience in the leadership hiring. Thereafter, I moved on to Aditya Brilla Capital. I spent almost uh, close to a decade, nine years. And over there, I was responsible to, you know, uh, completely set up the NBFC space of hiring. And that time, Aditya Birla had just about made their, uh, you know, entry into the NBFC space. So that again was a fantastic journey. And now I'm with Sipla, where I am looking at the global leadership hiring, the corporate HR and the employer branding. And a very beautiful thing about Sipla is that uh, whatever the organization does and believes, right, everything is centered around, you know, uh, the clarion call of care. So, uh, you know, everything that is caring for life. So all the actions, all the, you know, uh, ideation, the strategy, whatever we do out here is built around the fun fulcrum of care. So, yes, this is my journey that's been currently going on. So, um, you know, this year we will see a lot of leaders which will be moving towards adopting a more creative and a more innovative approach. And I think that is, these are the elements that will really take the, you know, the teams way ahead and uh, building a strong talent pipeline, supporting it. Uh, the way we work has changed considerably over the last few years. And this has had a, a significant impact on talent acquisition. A few things to make note of and, you know, if an organization needs to be future ready is, one of the most important things uh, that I believe and I have seen it and I've experienced it is building a strong employer brand and an employee value proposition because, uh, you know, meaning and purpose of the organization, uh, aspirational reasons for existing. Every organization has and wants to really invest in the meaning and the purpose because especially when you look at the young talent right now, they'll always place purpose above the brand. Uh, and they're motivated by the relationships and the culture that they encounter today, right? So that, that's the first thing that I think, uh, you know, we need to make note of. And secondly, it's all about experiences. How you build candidate experience right from the day of joining. Actually, no, I'll take a step back. It's before joining to onboarding. You know, that's the time when the employee really decides and uh, the elements in this process, you know, uh, really fuel his mindset of whether whether he wants to stay in the organization and for how long because these are these initial experiences of the candidate that typically stay with him so uh, you know building the employer brand and the candidate experience i think these are the two things that the organization will really need to invest in uh, when it comes to what we really plan to do right um, there, there are three very simple things you know which are not very complex and i think uh, fixing the simple basics are of prime importance so we really want to be more agile. We are agile, but we want to be more agile in responding to our hiring needs with speed and efficacy, right? 
And uh, secondly, um, we want to lay very clear emphasis on our culture, our purpose, and our values. Because as I mentioned earlier, you know, that's something that uh, the new talent, the organizations are running towards. And lastly, we want to focus on the entire candidate experience. So when I talk of candidate experience, it means right from you know, the initial stage to coming on board. And for that, it also means employ, you know, investing in our employer brand, and investing in our employee value proposition, uh, and what we communicate to the outside world. So when it comes to retaining, I think uh, one very important thing is you've got to have your basics right, right? So whatever you are doing currently, you've got to ensure that your basics are right and revisit them and re-challenge them. Secondly, we are looking at committing to employee well-being and adopting a very digitally driven mindset because having that mindset is the biggest asset for any organization. And lastly, while it is related to digital mindset, it's people analytics and that I'm specifically calling out because the data, um, you know, which is derived from people analytics can help improve uh, an organization's effectiveness and ultimately the bottom line, right? Uh, we've known long that it can also improve the recruitment efficiency and it can also eventually, eventually, you know, halve the attrition rates. So these are the couple of things that, uh, you know, on the strategy side that we're planning to, to involve and embed. Sure. So uh, we are now driving the global leadership hiring in a very, very completely centralized manner, right? So when I talk of the global leadership hiring, I'm including uh, countries and geographies like North America, South Africa, EMU, India, of course, because that's the largest, right? With the intent of uh, having in our minds that we want to give the employees a one CIPLA standardized structured experience. Because as I've spoken earlier, you know, ultimately employee experiences are uh, some, is something that's going to be, you know, paving the way ahead in 2023. So this is something that we are looking ahead. And again, you know, whatever we do at every stage, at every step, we are keeping care as the clarion call in the end to end processes that we are looking at. Uh, so I like journaling, right? When I say I like journaling, I like to consolidate my thoughts, uh, you know, be a little more self-aware and many other things along with that. And when I combine it with my passion for helping people to really create a positive impact, you know, in their, in their lives with the right mindset, with the right approach and the right navigation, I think that the, the other, uh, you know, option, if I'm not a talent leader, I would be a leadership coach because I think it clearly, clearly combines the elements of uh, really being aware and helping people, you know, navigate what their personal and professional aspirational growth mindset is. So that's something that I would be taking up if not a talent leader. So um, in my experience overall, you know, what I have really fully understood about HR and if I have to really convey this to someone amongst the many, right, there are a critical few. One uh, that I would like to highlight is you got to be trustworthy because uh, this quality is probably the most important one that any good human resource professional would need to have. And I'm saying this because people will only open up to you uh, or to someone whom they can trust and they must believe and truly believe that you will do the right thing and have their best interests at heart. So I think um, the first one is being trustworthy. Secondly is be kind, but not emotional. You know, there's this particular tendency that yes, we are, you know, HR, I think the important elements along with kindness is compassion, uh, empathy and kindness. And, um, you know, when you look at making decisions, one must realize that, you know, your objectivity in thinking through while being kind, while being compassionate, while being empathetic, I think that objective reasoning is very important because you'll always otherwise have this, you know, as an HR, a good HR professional, uh, this dichotomy will exist and you should know when to draw and how to look at situation with a different lens, keeping in mind all these elements, but at the same time being objective and rational. And lastly, I think listening well. Listening well is supremely important because that's the premise of good decision making. People will come to you on various fronts and coming up with solutions, you know, will stem from how well you have really heard them out, how well you have listened to them 
uh, and authentically listen to them because only that's when you'll be able to truly guide them correctly and uh, you know effectively so yes just to sum it up being trustworthy uh, being kind compassionate and being empathetic but not emotional while taking decisions and lastly listening well So, um, you know, the way we work has really changed and it has changed considerably right over the past few years. And this has a significant impact in, in you know, our, the most simple processes, uh, processes that we do. Uh, so right now there's this evaluation mode that we are in, right? Evaluation and thinking mode and looking at things as to how we can do and how we can better ourselves. So I think the need to reimagine, the need to rethink and the need to refresh all three elements one needs to look at and that's the lens that we are you know we've put on because only that will generate the efficiencies uh, wherever possible uh, secondly strengthening the alliances between teams right if you really want to be impactful in today's scenario and today and going ahead right in the years to come i think there has to be a supremely good uh, collaboration uh, between I mean, i'm talking about here is hr teams as well as business teams because only that will ensure that you know the talent strategy is in alignment with the overall business need so these are the two things that uh, you know i would lay emphasis on forbes india presents top 30 talent leaders of 2023 powered by indeed